Hey guys welcome back to Hook with Anime if you like the video make sure to subscribe to my channel let's begin. Chapter 1. Contributor. Dragon Pony 022. Naruto frowned at the recurring sight in front of him. He knew it was a dream since he had seen this same scene for nearly the last year or so. It was an old almost broken shrine as pieces of it looked like they were about to cave in on itself. It was bound in a red rope that looped around it so many times, sealing off the shrine from being opened but still allowing him to see into it, through the wooden screens. His body tensed again, like always as he felt the same oppressive force push down onto him while a single massive red eye opened up behind the screen. The eye nearly took up all of the insides of the shrine, the slitted pupil widening in the dark before a pearly white fang teeth smiled at him. Soon boy. Very soon we will meet again, the dark voice whispered out, fear almost gripping his chest before it all went away in a flash as he bolted up from his bed. He panted out breathlessly as he always hated how he was awoken so abruptly from the nightmare. Ugh. Same freaking thing every night but at least it doesn't wake me up too early, he thought as the alarm just started to chime before he silenced it and got off his bed. His name was Naruto Uzumaki a 17-year-old that lived in the haunted city of Crystal Cove. He was an orphan who lost his parents around when he was five but besides that, his dark red hair and whiskers on his cheeks he was moderately normal. Another day and most likely another stupid person deciding to dress up as a monster, he thought with a sigh as people trying out insane plots to either rob the town of something or drive everyone out of it. It was an odd mix of interesting and annoying. Especially since the adults and authority figures of the town always fell for them being real and wanted to profit off of it. The only people who didn't get swept along with the stupid masked monsters happened to be the group of people he called friends. Together they formed a group that were always at the center of everything and were the ones that solved them. The group consisted of Fred, the son of the mayor, Daphne, the daughter of Crystal Cove's most successful family, Shaggy and Scooby, a man and a dog that literally had a bottomless stomach and then there was Velma. Velma was his closest friend, ever since his parents disappeared. She was also the girl he has had a crush on for nearly as long as he has known her. To him Velma was utterly amazing. She was the smartest person he knew but never bragged about it or looked down on others like him since he was about average when it came to intelligence. Her figure was also incredibly beautiful even if she didn't see it herself. She was even so spontaneous at times, trusting her gut as much as she did her brain. Overall to him she was the whole package to him, the only downside was that she never noticed his feelings. Though it didn't keep him from being her closest friend. He sighed a bit saddened as he brought up old wounds before he heard a car honk from outside the medium-sized apartment he rented. Smiling he stuck his head out of the window to see his friends waiting for him in their van. I'll be right out, he called before going back in his apartment and closing the window. Going quickly he threw on his usual outfit which consisted of a long-sleeved black shirt and an orange jacket vest that had a black fur-lined hood. His pants were dark blue jeans while he wore black sandals as wearing close-toed shoes always felt off with him. He quickly left his apartment and smiled as his friends waved at him. Morning Naruto, how'd you sleep? Same nightmare as usual, a familiar voice acts as he turned and smiled, trying not to blush as he looked at the source of it. He swore every time he saw Velma she got more and more beautiful in his eyes. She was about a head shorter than him with a cute rounder face and short chin length auburn hair that had two red bows in it. Her eyes were a light green behind her glasses that brought out her light freckles. Her figure was utterly amazing, not a twig like other girls but she had a curvier figure with weight in all the right places, like her thighs and ass, that she carried well, a rather massive J-cup chest, asterisk one, and a very plump rear. Her trademark orange turtleneck sweater helped seriously hide her large chest alongside the heavy-duty bras he knew she wore due to his time sharing a house with her for a bit growing up. He had only really seen her figure, unrestrained, once when she wore a swimsuit but it was just a bit before her figure blossomed to how it is now. 
from his time together with her due to them knowing each other for so long he came to love her quick wit that made her able to trade facts and insults on the fly. Also due to his closeness with her he was the only one to know of Velma's slight wild side. She always wanted to be noticed and listened to due to her tourist attraction and slight money-obsessed parents never fully paying attention to her, something he was happy to pick up slack for. Yeah, same nightmare. I just wish it would stop or something for once. It's really getting annoying, he said as he ran his hand through his spiky red hair that poked out in every direction, his blue eyes looking down at Velma as she frowned up at him. She was the only one he trusted well enough to tell her about the nightmare, she had tried suggesting numerous remedies but none of them helped. I'm sure they will stop soon, I'll look up some more remedies after school, she said as he smiled and hugged her, resting his head on top of her head, something he knew she found embarrassing. Thanks Velma, always so sweet, he said with a chuckle as she rolled her eyes with a smile and hugged him back. He always loved having her in his arms as it made him feel like for a brief moment they were actually together and unbeknownst to him Velma also liked being in his arms. Something about it made her feel like she was safe. The hug, like normally, lasted for a time that others might consider awkward but their friends had grown to accept it after learning of his parentless situation and the fact Velma was the person he had been closest to since he was young. Come on guys. We need to get to school, Fred said as he honked the horn slightly, making Naruto sigh and let go of Velma. You get in the front, I'm going to stick in the back, Velma said as he frowned but nodded. While she walked away he couldn't help but stare at her luscious thighs and plump ass, which was barely hidden by her red skirt which, with the way she walked at times and the way her skirt was short, allowed him to see brief flashes off her butt and panties. He knew he it was slightly perverted to stare but with how things were with her not catching on to his feelings for a couple years looking was all he had sadly. Sorry Naruto, I tried to get you and Velma some more time, Daphne said with a frown as she was the only person that really knew of his feelings towards Velma, something she deduced on her own and, with his somewhat terrible poker face when it came to it, he confirmed it to her. Since then she was his ally as she was somewhat in the same unrequited love situation between her and Fred. Thanks Daphne but it's fine, not like I won't possibly get other chances, he said with a slight chuckle as Daphne nodded with a smile as she scooted over, allowing him to sit next to the window while Scooby, the talking dog of the group to lay on the floor while he ate a sandwich. Morning Ruruto, Scooby said with a smile. Morning Scoobs. He said with a chuckle as he pet the dog before closing the door and letting Fred pull off onto the road. He couldn't help but sigh as he saw Velma talk with Shaggy in the back of the van. He wasn't petty or shallow but he honestly didn't see what Velma saw in Shaggy. Shaggy was a nice guy and a good friend when it came down to it but it always seemed he was more interested in his dog Scooby than anything else. The main thing that really annoyed and borderline pissed him off was how he seemed almost scared and grossed out whenever Velma tried to show him affection. It honestly made him question the boy's sexuality a bit. He tried not to grind his teeth as he saw Velma try and show Shaggy affection. Grinding his teeth was a bad habit he picked up from biting his tongue and keeping his comments to himself whenever he got somewhat jealous of Shaggy. Hey Scooby how about you come sit up on the seat? I'm hopping in the back, he said as Daphne patted him on the back before he hopped over the seat and sat next to an upset Velma who was glaring at Shaggy. Sorry it was a bit stuffy up there with four people so I thought I'd join you back here, he said with a smile as he put his arm around her shoulder and pulled her into his side. His smile grew slightly as Velma leaned against him and rested her head on his chest. Naruto tried not to roll his eyes as best he could as Shaggy mouthed thank you, to him. He ignored the teen as he started to stroke Velma's shoulder and arm as while they were in a position that most people would picture couples in, this was merely how they always were. Velma felt happy as her frown from being upset at Shaggy not accepting her affection slowly disappeared completely into a smile as the comforting touch of Naruto, as always, cheered her up. Her smile grew as she scooted closer 
resting more against Naruto as he continued to caress her. Before he could enjoy Velma being in his arms anymore they were jostled forward as Fred slammed on the brakes just as a manhole cover shot up into the air a few feet in front of the mystery machine. He frowned as green smoke gathered around them just as the manhole cover embedded itself into the street a couple feet from them and a noise that sounded like a mix between a growl and a gurgle sounded out from in the smoke. Quick roll up the window. Naruto said as he saw some shadow coming closer to the open window before Daphne leapt over and quickly rolled up the window just as a glowing green hand slammed onto the window. He watched from the backseat as the monster's arms stretched out, rocking the van before he held onto Velma, cushioning her as they are slammed against one side to the other. He had a slight blush on his cheeks as due to the shaking he was currently holding onto some of the exposed parts of Velma's thighs. He couldn't help but take a bit of an advantage of the situation as he gently rubbed his hands up and down her thighs a bit as best as he could with the rocking. Velma, not that he could see, also had a blush on her cheeks from the physical contact but decided to keep her mouth shut, figuring it was all because of whatever was attacking the van. Zoinks. Like, what was that? Shaggy axed out as Naruto tried not to blush from the fact that because of how the van was shaken up Velma's chest was now against his face. It looks like a mystery to me and I think that's a little more important than school to me. Fred said as he quickly got out of the van and ran after where the shadow had lumbered off to. Come on guys, Daphne said as Velma quickly got up, shaking off her blush as she grabbed Naruto's wrist and pulled him up before they all ran after Fred. He frowned a bit as one by one they all went down into the sewer, turning on their flashlights so they could see. Well I doubt our sewers are supposed to have holes in them like this, Naruto said as he flashed his light towards the hole in the wall that led to what looked like one of the Crystal Cove's caves. Guys look over there, Velma said as she flashed her light towards a stack of metal drums, all bearing a radioactive symbol with glowing green goo seeping out of them. They look like military-style barrels. By the oxidation I'd say probably 30 or 40 years old, she added as Naruto moved her back before she could step into any of the green waste. Be careful then, I doubt stepping in something radioactive is good for your health, he said with a chuckle as Daphne wandered off. Fred, I think I found something, Daphne said as they looked over to see her holding a golden locket that played a light tune when opened. Nice work Daphne, it could be a clue, Fred said as Daphne blushed softly and smiled. Thanks Fred you're so sweet, she said before she looked up to already see Fred walking away. Oh, oh we can talk later then, she added with a sigh before Naruto patted her on the back, a gesture they often gave to one another when their interest somewhat shut them down. Naruto frowned as he crouched down and picked up a hard hat, wondering where it came from before they all heard a dripping sound. He was the first to start looking up before he sighed. Well this just got a bit weirder and I think it's time to call the cops, Naruto said as they all saw three cocooned workers stuck to the ceiling of the caves. The cops, being that they were nearby City Hall, came rather fast before escorting them out of the caves while removing the bodies from the ceiling. All right do you kids see what happens when you stick your noses where they don't belong? People get cocooned. Sheriff Stone, the sheriff of Crystal Cove and their least biggest fan, said as Naruto rolled his eyes. Well first we found him like that and how is this remotely our fault? He axed with a sigh before the sheriff glared at him. He and the sheriff never got along, more so than the others. He didn't know if it was because of his lack of parents or the fact that the sheriff had tried before to set him straight, but they often butted heads a lot. Yeah and there was a monster, Daphne said before the sheriff interrupted her. Okay from this point forward this is a crime scene and a future tourist attraction. Stay out of it, he said as Velma clenched her fist and shook it at the back of the retreating sheriff. I've gotta, stay out of it, right here, she said with a growl as he smiled, resting his head on top of hers as he put his hands on her shoulders to calm her down. Calm down Velma I doubt the mayor would be happy that his sheriff got beaten down by you, 
he said with a chuckle as Velma pouted slightly from him resting his head on hers but made no attempt to push him away. Let me talk to him, Fred said with a smile as he walked towards the cop cars and ambulance. Don't worry, Fred will make him understand, Daphne said in a dreamy tone, watching Fred walk away before they widened their eyes in slight shock when Fred started to run back towards them with one of the cocooned bodies over his shoulder. Shaggy start the car, Fred said as Naruto almost fell over laughing while he went to open up the back of the mystery machine. I thought like you said you were going to talk to him. Shaggy axed as Fred shrugged his shoulders, still running towards the van. He wasn't in a listening mood, Fred said in a hurried tone. So you steal a dead body? Rockin', Velma said as she stood next to Naruto before Fred tossed the body in the van. Well I guess I can cross, stealing a body, off my bucket list, Naruto said with a chuckle as everyone, besides Velma, looked at him strangely. What? Weekend at Bernie's, he said explaining it as they all nodded, understanding that he didn't have anything creepy behind it. Come on guys, I know just who can help us, Freddy said as Shaggy and him got in the front seat, leaving Naruto, the two girls and Scooby in the back with the body. Well let's hurry, having a dried up dead body this close to me is a bit disturbing, Velma said as she scooted closer to Naruto, trying to move out of the body's line of sight. Shaggy, being the one driving, quickly drove them to their high school before he and Fred started to carry the body through the hallways of the school. Are we seriously just going to barge in there? I'm pretty sure this will traumatize some people. On second thought let's go in there. It sounds fun, Naruto said with a chuckle before Velma jokingly, not at all seriously, hit him on the back of the head. We are in a hurry so we have to go in now. Fred said as they quickly stormed into the biology classroom. Professor Raffalo, we need your help, he said as the whole class ran out screaming, making Naruto chuckle as he knew that was going to happen. Couldn't you kids have waited until break? The professor said as Naruto shook his head. And miss seeing everyone run off screaming. No way, he said as Velma smirked at him and rolled her eyes. She was used to his pranking nature and how he liked messing with people at times. She also knew he used to be worse when it came to it as in the past he used to terrorize the kids in the elementary school with paint bombs and the like. It wasn't until he accidentally splashed her in paint did he tone it down and keep it under wraps. Nowadays he only used his skills when he needed them to either help with Fred's traps or just mess with whatever costumes monster that was terrorizing the town. While he might not be the smartest kid in school he was very smart when it came to making controlled explosions and pyrotechnics. He still always kept a smoke bomb on him in case they needed to make an escape. Fine, just set the cocoon on my table, the professor said as Shaggy and Fred quickly went over to set it down allowing the professor to check it over with a stethoscope. Is he like, dead? Shaggy axed with a shiver as Professor Raffalo shook his head. No. He's alive and seems to be in some kind of dehydrated stasis, the professor said as Naruto shrugged his shoulders. Well good for the guy but bad for my list, Naruto said with a chuckle as the professor continued to look the cocooned body over. I have no idea how this came to be but I'm guessing it's temporary. Raffalo said as he took off his stethoscope. Do you have any idea what could have done this? Daphne asked as the professor rubbed his chin. I'm not sure I'll have to do further tests, he said as Velma rose her hand up to get his attention. Couldn't you scrape the cocoon off him a bit and study that so we can get the body to the hospital since he is still alive, Velma said before Fred covered her mouth with a nervous smile as he awkwardly laughed. You do your tests professor and we'll get out of your hair, Fred said still awkwardly laughing as he started to gather them up and move them towards the door. I'm sure he will get the medical treatment he needs when he gets out of the cocoon Velma, for now we should worry about the monster that is cocooning the people so no one else gets in the same situation, Naruto said as Velma nodded before they got back into the van. Let's go get some food and figure out our plan to find the monster. Fred said as Shaggy and Scooby smiled at the mention of food. Oh, let's like go to Fruitmares. 
Shaggy said as Fred nodded and got behind the wheel. Ugh, that stuff is so weird. Naruto said with a shiver as that green food had such an odd consistency and wasn't yogurt or ice cream. He didn't like eating something that no one knew what it was. He conceded though as he, Velma, and Shaggy got back in the back with Velma sitting down next to him again as the van pulled out of the school parking lot towards Fruitmares. The ride there was a bit silent, most likely due to Fred already thinking up possible traps for him to use to catch whatever monster there was, Shaggy and Scooby too focused on eating, and Velma just relaxing against his shoulder. Come on guys, let's, like, get in line before it gets even longer, Shaggy said as they waited in line while Naruto slightly had to hide a bit behind the others to avoid the one thing that honestly scared him. Clowns. He didn't know what it was about clowns that scared him but it was the one thing he can't handle. Bring him face to face with any other monster and he'd be fine and ready to take them down but clowns honestly terrified him. Oh Naruto. I'm so sorry I forgot that the owner of Fruitmares is a clown, Velma said with a frown as she comfortingly held her friend's hand to try and calm him down. It's fine. I know how much Shaggy and Scooby like it so I wasn't going to make you all go somewhere else just because of my random fear. Plus I'm fine as long as it stays away from me, he said as he gave Velma's hand a squeeze as the line quickly moved along. Come on guys let's get the fruit mare and leave. Naruto's having trouble with the whole clown thing, Daphne said as she was the next to remember her friend's fear. Fred nodded as he paid for a cone for each of them and ate for Shaggy and Scooby as they made their way towards the door. I still don't know what this stuff is, Fred said with a slight frown as he bit into his. That's the point, like, it's supposed to be a secret, Shaggy said as he held a box that had all eight of his and Scooby's cones sitting in it before they started to eat, if you could call it that. At times Naruto wondered if they actually ate sometimes since they often made more of a mess, sending food flying everywhere and their mouths covered in food. Scooby he could understand eating like that since he is a dog but Shaggy was a teenage boy. You know what, I'm not hungry anymore, you can have mine Scooby, Naruto said as he tossed his cone towards the dog who jumped up and caught it in his mouth. Now can we please get out of here? I really don't like it here, he said before a pair of green gloved hands grabbed his shoulders. Ah come on, it's always fun at Fruitmares. How about a shrimp boat made out of circus balloons, Fruitmare said as Velma and the others widened their eyes, a bit worried what Naruto would do since when he was afraid Naruto either punched or ran. Thankfully for them he silently bolted from the store so fast it made a bit of a gust. I'm sorry Mr. Fruitmare. He just has a bad fear of clowns. Nothing personal, Velma said as she quickly followed after her friend with the others following behind her. Thankfully Naruto stopped running as he was holding onto a railing for support. I hate clowns, he growled out with a shiver as he shook it off. Are you okay? Velma acts as she hugged him from behind, rubbing his back to calm him down. She didn't mind comforting her best friend but it always made her blush a bit whenever she felt his toned and defined muscles against her like whenever they hugged or leaned against one another. He too had to hold back his blush as he felt Velma's body press against his back, her breasts, even under her sweater, pressing up against him made things difficult. You always are the one who calms me down so easily, thanks Velma. He said with a soft smile as he started to run his hands over her arms that were wrapped around his chest. Though with how her face was basically buried in his back no one noticed the light blush on her face due to the sincere comment from her friend, making her happy she was still able to calm him down like this even after so many years. Like how come no one comforts like me and Scoobs when we get like scared? Shaggy axed as Daphne who was smiling at the cute moment that to everyone else looked like friend helping another friend but to Daphne she could see the undertones of it. That's because you are always scared Shaggy and if we did that every time we'd be glued to you, Daphne said as they opened their mouths to retort but frowned and shut their mouths as they knew it was true. Come on guys, we need to talk about the monster and how if the cocoon is organic it would be the first honest to goodness monster in Crystal Cove, 
Fred said as Daphne sighed. As much as she loved Fred he had little or no tact when it came to stuff like that as well as timing. Velma sighed as she pulled away from Naruto, fixing her glasses. My guess is that the cocoon is a multi-celled mutation, probably a result of radiated allotropes and free radical implosions, she said as she walked over towards Shaggy. What do you think Shaggy? She asked as she tried to hold his hand. Naruto's hands clenched around the railing as he saw Shaggy freak out and run away from Velma like she was a monster claiming he wanted more fruit mares. You know that is interesting but if it is radiation, like those drums we found underground, wouldn't there be readings of radioactivity around town and the bodies of the people cocooned would be getting radiated as well, he said as he turned around, facing them and leaning back against the railing. So it makes me wonder is it made of something else or what? He added with a frown as something felt off about it. We'll have to see what Professor Raffalo finds out tomorrow. I'll see you guys tomorrow, Fred said as he and Daphne walked off towards the van. Well at least someone listened to me, Velma grumbled as Naruto slung his arm over her shoulder with a chuckle. I might not understand most of it but I listened, Naruto said with a chuckle as they started to walk home, both of which were rather close by to one another. He frowned a bit as he noticed Shaggy returning and pulled his arm off of her, knowing already that she most likely wanted some space to talk with him. I'll catch up in a bit I think I forgot my phone in the mystery machine so I got to check before Fred drives off, he said as Velma nodded and he jogged over to the van before sighing and leaning against it. I'm sorry Naruto that Fred keeps interrupting yours and Velma's moments. I'm trying to teach him the concept of a moment. Daphne said as she rolled down the window. It's whatever. Seems like Fred did that same to you a while ago. We are both fighting an uphill battle, he said as he noticed the defeated look on Daphne's face. Well at least yours actually notices things from time to time unlike mine who, as much as I love him, is so dense. Getting him to look away from his traps and focus on me is like trying to get Scooby to spend a romantic evening with a cat. She said with a sigh as Naruto patted her head, making her giggle and smile a bit. I know it will be hard but it's not like either one of us is going to just quit since I doubt feelings work like that, he said with a chuckle as she nodded. Thanks Naruto, she said as they watched Shaggy and Velma talk a bit in the distance though with Naruto's above perfect hearing he could somewhat listen to them even from across the street. He was incredibly thankful for his insane patience since if not for that he would have snapped at Shaggy long ago for how he constantly keeps pushing her off for Scooby-Doo, not listening to her or even doing anything with her as he was afraid of his dog getting upset. Not to be rude to Shaggy but he really is an idiot for being more worried about a dog than Velma, he said with a sigh as Daphne nodded as they watched Shaggy run off after Velma tried to kiss him and he ran his hand through his hair. I'll see you guys tomorrow, I'm going to catch up to Velma and try and cheer her up, he said as Daphne smiled. Good luck, she yelled as he jogged after Velma to catch up with her. Hey sorry about that I actually did leave my phone in the van, he said with a smile as he draped his arm over her shoulder again. So there's this science fiction movie marathon on tonight and was wondering if you wanted to watch it with me. He asked her chuckling as she looked at him with a raised eyebrow. Why do you want to watch that? We both know you don't understand much of those kinds of movies, she said as he rubbed the back of his head with a smirk. Well I know you love those kinds of movies and we always watch them when they come on. Plus you look a bit upset about something so I thought what better way to cheer you up, he said as he gave her shoulder a soft squeeze. Velma couldn't hold back her smile as it broke through her frown, fine, I guess that sounds fun. Plus I haven't been over in a while and I want to make sure you aren't making a mess of your room again. And you better have kept those chocolates that I like in stock. Velma said while playfully poking him in the chest as he smiled and nodded. I have been keeping the place nice and clean Velma since I really don't want your parents to get upset about it since it is technically their place that I'm renting. As for the chocolate I always keep some in my cupboard in case you randomly drop by since you have a key, he said with a smirk as her knew how. Addicted, Velma was to chocolate and was fine with buying them for her. 
Well then what's keeping us? I'll call my mom when we get there. Velma said with a smile as she was happy to get some alone time with Naruto, her closest friend, since with all the mysteries and monsters that have been coming into town for the last few months they had been very busy. Both of them couldn't help but smile as they walked towards his apartment, his arm still draped over his shoulder as she moved closer to him, always enjoying when he was close. He always made her feel safe, especially given how many times he had saved her and the others from the monsters and fought the monsters to give them time to escape or capture it. He was the bravest person in the group, even with his debilitating fear of clowns. Velma must have been too caught up in her thoughts as they had arrived at his apartment before she even noticed. Well, come on in Velma, it's not like this isn't a second home to you or anything, he teased as he gave her a squeeze on her shoulder while he opened the door for her. She blushed a bit out of embarrassment for not paying attention for the walkover while she let herself into the apartment. It was a modest one-bedroom one-bath apartment that had a decent-sized kitchen and even a little living room and even came equipped with a washing and drying machine. It was a place her parents leased out to him after he turned 16 and they decided he should get his own place and move out of their basement. He paid for the rent by working for them at her family's gift and tour shop. She smiled as she saw the usual pictures of the group around his apartment as his friends were basically everything he had. No one else in the group knew that he was an orphan and had been missing his parents since he was five, a fact that was covered up by her whenever they were arrested, for saving the town she would lie and say they were always out of town. Thankfully no one ever questioned it and figured he was staying with her until they came back from their trip across seas. Her smile grew slightly as she noticed a few photos of just the two of them. They ranged from them as little kids to more recent. She was a bit happy that he had pictures of just the two of them since it meant they really were still close, even with the whole thing where Shaggy and she had started dating. He was the only one she told since she never wanted to hide anything from him and he was always so supportive of her. Velma, you still there? Naruto teased as she looked up to see him smiling at her with a bar of chocolate and two coffee cups full of tea in his hands. She also noticed how he had changed out of his usual clothes and into a pair of black pajama pants and an orange sleeveless shirt that had a red spiral painted on the front of it. Did you get changed? Make tea and grab my chocolate in the time I was looking around. She asked as he chuckled and nodded while she took her tea and chocolate. Yeah, you've been out of it since fruit mares. Are you feeling okay? He asked as he pressed the back of his hand against her forehead. Yes I'm fine, she said as she gently pushed his hand away, I've just had a somewhat bad day. Are my pajamas and clothes still where I left them cause I really need to get out of this sweater, she said as while it was chilly outside it was rather warm in his apartment. Yeah they are still where you left them, the only clothes of yours I touch here are the dirty ones you put in the basket, he said as Velma nodded with a smile and quickly ran into his room taking them from his dresser and slid into the bathroom. I'll get the TV turned on and ready so we can go straight to watching when you get out. I might order a pizza, the same as always right? He asked through the closed door. Yeah, that sounds great, she said as since the pizza place was literally just down the street she didn't doubt that it would be here in a few minutes. Velma hummed a little tune as she changed into her pajamas, which consisted of a dark red tank top and a pair of short soft orange pajama shorts. Normally she would never wear these kinds of things in public but around Naruto it was fine. She had known him since she was little so she wasn't nearly as self-conscious around him. Naruto tried his hardest not to stare at Velma as she walked out of the bathroom just as the pizza was delivered being that he normally ordered one around this time, but failed as now that she was out of her baggy clothes he could see all of her figure. He was able to see just how plump her butt was, how soft her thighs looked and just how sizable her breasts were, something that was extremely hidden under her baggy sweater. Velma blushed a bit as she noticed him staring at her, her pride as a woman going up a bit as she felt proud that her best friend still saw her as a girl and not just his friend only. What are you looking so intently at? 
She axed as she suddenly became very self-conscious from how intently he was looking. Naruto quickly snapped out of his daze and blushed softly as he tore his eyes away from Velma and her body. Oh oh and nothing. I just haven't had you over here in a while so I was just enjoying this bit of normalcy, he said with a chuckle, quickly turning his face to hide the blush. Well come on. The marathon is starting so we wouldn't want to miss the beginning, he said as he picked up the pizza and smiled at her. Sure I'll just text my mom as a formality since it's pretty much if I'm not home I'm over here plus I'm pretty sure the horses are racing today so she won't even notice me missing, Velma said with a smile as she walked over to the living room. Again he tried not to look but Naruto couldn't help but watch her as she walked off into his living room, her rear jiggling a bit as she jumped onto his couch with a smirk. Well come on Naruto, the movies are starting. Velma said as he nodded and walked over, taking his seat next to her. Yeah I'm here, turn it on, he said with a smile as he slung his arm over her shoulder, relaxing into the couch as the movies started. A few hours later, Velma woke up with a slight groan as she rubbed her eyes, blindly reaching for her glasses as the last thing she remembered was watching movies with Naruto on the couch meaning she had fallen asleep on the couch. There, there, she thought while she grabbed her glasses, slipping them onto her face before a blush covered her cheeks as she saw just how close she was to Naruto. In Naruto's sleep he seemed to have wrapped his arms around her, pressing her up against his chest and making her feel his defined muscles through their moderately thin pajamas. Oh Naruto, you're really making this hard for me, Velma thought with a frown as she contemplated pulling away but couldn't bring herself to do it and ended up wrapping her arms around him, pressing herself against him a bit more. She had long since given up the thought that someone like Naruto, who was easily one of the most popular and good-looking guys in school, would go after someone like her. She was a nerdy plump girl and he was a toned and athletic boy that was the exact opposite of her when it came to looks. She was happy with him just being her friend and giving her the occasional hug as well as moments like these where they hung out at his apartment. At least he's still my friend and is still here for me, she thought as she rested her head against his chest. Velma, Naruto mumbled out as she slowly looked up, a bit afraid that he woke up just as she had started to basically cuddle him. The worry though went away as she saw that he was still asleep. It made her smile a bit more as he seemed to smile happily after saying her name. She jolted slightly in surprise as she felt his hand slide down her back, brushing up against the bare skin of her lower back as her shirt rode up a bit while she slept. Her blush grew even darker as he almost seemed to be petting her lower back, dangerously close to her butt a bit. The near intimate contact made her surprised but at the same time made her feel comfortable. It made her wonder how this would feel to have all the time and not just when one of them was asleep. She let out a content sigh as she laid her head against his chest and pulled herself closer to him, cuddling up against him as while she had given up the pipe dream of hers to be with Naruto and started to try to fall for Shaggy instead she wanted to enjoy what she could. Good night Naruto, she whispered with a smile as she took off her glasses, setting them on the table before she drifted off back to sleep, entirely comfortable in the embrace of her closest friend and the man she knew she could never get. Next morning, Naruto was the first to wake up as the blaring sound of the alarm on his phone woke him up before he quickly hit the snooze button but it was too late as he was already awake. As his eyes adjusted to the light he couldn't help but smile as he saw Velma's hair messily sprawled against his chest while she let out a grumble as she seemed to be slowly waking up. He smiled a bit as he felt his hands on her lower back, on the bare skin as her shirt was pulled up a bit. He could have removed his hands but with an opportunity like this he didn't feel like wasting it as he started to pet her lower back. Why good morning sleeping beauty, he said with a chuckle as she dryly laughed into his chest, her face still buried in it. Yeah right, I so could pull off a cartoon princess, she said as she was still tired and adjusted herself to stay comfortable wiggling a bit as she kept her hold on him and continued to use his chest as a pillow. Naruto couldn't help but chuckle as he smiled down at her. Yeah you're right, you're much better than any boring princess that would need saving. 
I say having a clever girl that can take care of herself is far more appealing, he said as he teasingly poked her lower back. Velma smirked as she looked up at him, even with her terrible eyesight, able to make out his face and smile as she poked his cheek. Yan don't you forget it, she said as she kept her finger against his cheek. A bit in a trance as they looked at one another, Velma smiled and used her index and middle fingers, slowly tracing his jawline, as Naruto found himself gently caressing her skin along the rim of her shorts. Neither one of them looked away from one another, their cheeks slowly heating up from the near intimacy of the moment but, before anything could or would happen, the alarm on his phone started to blare again, interrupting whatever was going on between the two of them. Velma was the first to sit upright as a blush grew darker on her cheeks. I I have to go change, she said quickly as she quickly felt around for her glasses before she ran off towards the bathroom, barely giving any time for Naruto to look at her. Naruto wasn't faring any better as he covered his face with his hands and let out a muffled groan. This is torture, he yelled mentally as he turned off his cell phone alarm and resisted throwing it against the wall for ruining whatever that moment was. If things continue like this I doubt I'll be able to just be the friend that helps her with her crappy relationship, he thought as he started his coffee machine since he still remembered how Velma needed some to fully wake up. I don't want to be an asshole that steals a girl from someone else but with Shaggy it seems like he doesn't even care about the relationship, he thought with a sigh as he sat down at his kitchen table before he shook his head ran his hands through his hair. Number. Velma honestly deserves someone who actually wants to be with her. I hate seeing her all depressed and sad whenever Shaggy runs away from her and I care too much about her to continue seeing it happen, he thought as he clenched his fists. If I have to be a jerk and steal her away then honestly, so be it, he added with a sigh as Velma walked out of the bathroom, still wearing her pajamas, which seeing her in them only steeled his resolve. She also wore a smile on her face that put him at ease as he had slightly been worried he had freaked her out or something with that odd moment between the two of them. Oh, I'll pour your coffee for you. It should be brewed, he said as he walked over to the coffee maker and started to pour her a cup, adding the additions she liked in it. Thanks Naruto, coffee always helps me wake up a bit in the morning, she said as she accepted the cup before taking a small sip to test the temperature letting out a content sigh. You always get it perfect. I've tried asking Shaggy to get me a cup at the little coffee place near school but he never remembers it correctly even after telling him repeatedly for years, she said with a chuckle as Naruto smiled and poured himself a cup. Well I just remember always having to make it for you back when I lived in your basement so you would get out of bed. You were always so lazy in the mornings back then. I remember how cute and awake you looked almost the second after drinking some coffee you would always go back to reading whatever book you were into at the time before I had to drag you out of the house, he said as she smiled, hiding it behind the cup as she watched him smile at her, drinking his own coffee. Velma for once, between last night and this morning, actually felt a very small bit of hope. Hope that maybe the pipe dream of being with Naruto wasn't so unobtainable. Though her insecurities still nibbled at the budding hope. I'm going to go change real quick and I'll pull out your clothes as well for you to change into after your coffee, is that okay? He asked as she nodded with a smile. Halfway to his bedroom he stopped and turned around, looking at Velma with a bit of a nervous smile. Oh I was wondering since it always feels better to eat with someone rather than alone do you want to come by for dinner? I'll walk you back home after it he said as Velma looked up at him and smiled. That sounds great actually, she said as he smiled and turned back around to go get changed to allow her to get changed next before they spent their weekend most likely with the others since that is how most weekends ended up as. And true to the point he was right. A few minutes after they both had gotten changed he had gotten a call from Daphne telling him something had happened to Professor Raffalo and that Fred had apparently taken it hard since he was the one that had gotten the professor involved. Apparently Fred was moping around at the local radio station, which was ran by another friend of theirs Angel Dynamite. Of course getting there when Fred owned the only transportation they had made it a bit difficult. 
Thankfully though Velma's mom was able to help him and Velma get there. I was wondering when you all would get here. He's in the back. Angel said as Naruto was still impressed at her ability to pull off old 70s style clothing and not make it look ridiculous. They followed as Angel led them to the back room of the radio station studio to see Fred asleep on the ground, hugging onto a record player before Daphne walked up to him, crouching down to his level. Fred, it's us, we're here for you, Daphne said as she hugged him on the ground and Scooby licked up his hair. It's no use gang. I was the one who stole the body and Professor Raffalo paid the price. I should have listened to my dad and stayed out of anything to do with mysteries, Fred said as Velma stepped forward with a frown. We all helped steal the body Fred, Velma said before Shaggy held up his hand. Well I never actually touch ow. Shaggy started to say before both he and Velma elbowed him, fine geez, we all took part Freddy, he said as Velma rolled her eyes. Fred Jones, you've never turned away from a mystery in your life, Daphne said as Fred raised his head. But I've got nothing, Fred yelled as Velma put her hands on her hips and frowned down at Fred. Man up Fred, we've still got our first clue, the cocoon. I brought a sample Scooby. What are you doing? She said before yelling at the dog in shock as he was eating away at the sample of cocoon she had set down on the table. What? It's fruit mares, Scooby said before he went back to sloppily eating it, making Velma shiver and Angel to frown. Check it out, if that dog mutates I'm putting it down, dig. She said as Shaggy walked past them. Wait, like hold on, I think I get it, Shaggy said as he walked over, dipped his own finger into the bowl and tasted it making everyone cringe and let out an ew. No you guys it's fruit mares. The cocoon is made out of the same stuff as Mr. Fruitmare's dessert, Shaggy said as they walked over to see if it was true. I'm still not eating that stuff after Scooby's been slobbering over it, he said just as everyone else tasted it. He's right but if the cocoon is made out of Fruitmare's dessert, Daphne said as Shaggy interrupted her. Then if we capture the monster we can open up our own shop and have an endless supply of Fruitmare's dessert. Shaggy said as Naruto rolled his eyes. Or that means we don't have to worry about radiation and the monster is a clear hoax as I doubt a real monster would be made out of a dessert, Naruto said as he leaned against the doorframe. Stop thinking with the bottomless pit you call a stomach, he added as Shaggy frowned slightly and Fred rubbed his chin. What do we know about Franklin Frutimer? Fred acts as Naruto shivered. Besides that he is a clown. He asked as Velma patted him on the shoulder consolingly. I'll look it up, she said as she sat down behind Angel's computer and started researching. Apparently he showed up out of nowhere two months ago. Besides that we know nothing, Velma said as with her skills on a computer looking up one clown was easy enough. He is hiring right now for female servers, she said as Fred smiled. Then that's our in, Fred said as Shaggy nodded. If the girls can get jobs at Fruitmares they can snoop around and find out more, Shaggy said as Fred smiled and nodded. That's a great idea Shag. Fred said as he and the others got their plan together. Fruitmares. Naruto struggled not to laugh to the point he was red in the face as he looked at Shaggy and Scooby in the female uniform all with wigs and makeup on them. Um, like, this isn't exactly what I had in mind. Why are me and Scooby dressed like girls when Daphne and Velma are girls? Shaggy asked as Scooby adjusted his skirt. Yeah, my skirt is too tight, Scooby said as Daphne and Velma smirked at them. Because Velma and I refused, Daphne said as Naruto smiled at Velma. I still think you would have looked great in it Velma, he said as Velma scoffed, a soft blush on her face, and rolled her eyes. Yeah right. Only in your dreams, Velma said as he shrugged his shoulders with a chuckle as while Shaggy and Scooby were working at the shop until closing he and the others would be getting the parts to Fred's next trap set up so they could put it together wherever they were planning on trapping the monster. The day went by rather quickly as before any of them really noticed it was already night and Fruitmares was closing up. Okay gang, now's our chance. 
Fred said as they watched Mr. Fruitmare leave the store and have Shaggy and Scooby lock up. Once they were at the door Shaggy quickly opened it and accepted his clothes from Daphne. All right gang fan out. See if you can find anything that ties Franklin Fruitmare to the slime mutant, Fred said as they all split up. Though Naruto followed Velma as always since that was kind of how things went with splitting up. Fred and Daphne, Shaggy and Scooby, and then him and Velma. As they looked around they found nothing so far, only drawers full of boxes of balloons and the freezers full of the Fruitmare dessert, which Shaggy and Scooby were devouring. Let's go check out the kitchen, Velma said as Naruto nodded and followed her before they heard Daphne calling for help as she pounded on a door. Daphne, are you okay? He asked as he picked up a crowbar from nearby before Fred also came running over to help. Yeah, the door closed behind me suddenly, Daphne said as he and Fred forced open the door just as Shaggy and Scooby bolted into the room but before they could crash into Daphne he quickly pulled her out of the way. He sighed as they crashed into the room before he looked in and didn't even see them. Did you two crash through the room? He asked before he noticed a hole in the floor at the back of the room. I it was like a monster. Shaggy's voice yelled out from the hole before they all looked down to see that they had fallen down into one of the caves that ran under the city. We found something. Scooby added as he shrugged his shoulders and jumped down the hole. Hum, I think this is the same cave we were in the other day, Naruto said as he held out his arms to catch Velma while he looked away politely so he didn't see up her skirt. It must run through fruit mares as well. Velma said as Naruto set her down, allowing her to dust off and straighten her skirt, before he caught Daphne next. And check that out, Daphne said as she pointed towards another hole in the ceiling before Naruto set her down. It looks like someone has been digging, she said as she walked over, noticing a shovel standing up in a pile of rubble. Hold on a second, according to my GPS this is only 20 yards from fruit mares which would put it directly under Crystal Cove's bank, she said as the others caught on. But like dude, why would a slime mutant bust a hole through fruit mares and then a bank? Shaggy said with a frown. Maybe he's hungry, Scooby said as Naruto smirked. For money, a rather human craving wouldn't you say? He asked the others as Velma smirked. I smell a trap coming. I hope you're feeling up to leading a monster around Naruto. Velma said as Naruto chuckled, already loosening up his muscles. Oh I'm more than ready, he said with a smirk, always ready to bait a stupid person in a monster suit. Fred, being the expert at traps that he was, easily was able to set up the trap in a matter of a few minutes. The over-complexity of it was a bit worrying but Naruto's job was to lure the monster over and if it got out of the trap capture it himself. He sighed slightly as he hated waiting for the monster appear, choosing to hide behind the barrels of what he hoped wasn't actual radioactive material before he heard the same growl from the day before. Well, you really aren't a looker are you? He asked as he hopped up on top of the pyramid of barrels with a smirk before he immediately crouched down as it fired a blob of its material at him. Testy as well I see. With a face like that I'd be angry too. He taunted as he back flipped off the barrels to avoid its extended limb trying to grab him. He had to backflip a few more times, thankful that it was easy to read, before he turned around and started to run while it chased after him in a quick but limping pace. He continued to lead the monster along, dodging lobbed blobs of its goo and its claws before he reached the start of the Rube Goldberg type trap that Fred had started. His eyes widened a bit as he felt himself slip quickly looking down to see the monster had sent a carpet of slime towards him to trip him up. Before it sent him sliding into the small lake in the cavern. Crap. Freaking monster. He's so lucky I have a waterproof case on my phone. He yelled mentally as he quickly swam back up only to sweat drop as he saw Fred, Daphne, Shaggy and Scooby all trapped in the cage as Velma was now running away from the monster. Naruto. Go help Velma. We'll get out of here soon. Fred yelled as he nodded, slicking his hair back as he quickly chased after the monster who had just jumped back up the hole leading to fruit mares. 
The second he got up there he could already see that Velma was in danger as the monster had bound her legs. Running through the kitchen he grabbed the extra long hose that connected to the dessert machine as he jumped up on the counter with a glare. Get away from her you creep. Naruto yelled as he pushed off of the counter, using it as a springboard before he copied a move he had seen in an old kung fu movie, Return of the Green Beast, called the Dynamic Entry. It was basically a double-legged flying kick. Thankfully though it seemed to work and catch the monster off guard as his feet slammed into the monster's chest, sending him flying across the room and into the opposite wall before he came to a skidding stop next to Velma. The second he righted himself he quickly aimed the hose at the monster and turned it on, blasting it with a torrent of frozen dessert that stuck it to the wall before tossing the hose down and looked towards Velma. Are you okay Velma? He axed as he tore off the binding on her ankles before he brushed the hair away from her face, slightly stroking her cheek. Why yeah I'm fine, it didn't get me besides my legs, Velma said, a bit in awe at how heroically he had saved her, even going as far as to flying kick it in an act to protect her. A slight blush came to her cheeks as she felt his wet thumb, as he had recently taken a dip in the cavern's pond softly stroke against her cheek before the others came back. What is going on here? Sheriff Stone yelled as he and Mayor Jones burst into the store, making Velma jump and scoot away in a mix of embarrassment and shock before she realized he meant the monster stuck to the wall. And why is the town's newest tourist attraction cocooned to the wall? Mayor Jones said as Fred held up his hands to calm his father down. Dad, Sheriff, hold on. You don't understand, that is not a monster, Fred said as Naruto helped Velma back up to her feet with a smile. Oh hobbing steam clams Freddy then who is it? The mayor axed with a frown. Franklin Fruitmare. All but Naruto said as he wasn't quite sure who it was and the fear of if it was a clown behind the mask set in. He was trying to rob Crystal Cove Bank, Velma said as Sheriff Stone frowned. That's impossible because Franklin Fruitmare was the one who called us, he said as he stepped aside and Mr. Fruitmare walked in, causing Naruto to slightly freeze up. What? The gang all acts in confusion as Velma held onto Naruto's wrist, slightly calming him down. I was making a clipper ship out of circus balloons when the silent alarm went off at my home, he said before looking towards the monster. Oh good gracious, what is that? He axed as Shaggy frowned and walked up. Like dude if this isn't Franklin Fruitmare then like, who is it? He axed as Scooby went up and pulled off the mask. Professor Emmanuel Raffalo. They said in confusion as once the mask was pulled away it revealed the professor they had come to for help yesterday. That's right. I was trying to scare people away from the sewers while I dug my way into the bank and got rich. He said as Daphne frowned. But you got a job as a teacher. Why do you need more money? She asked as he just gave her a blank and immensely tired look that quickly made them understand. I discovered that the Crystal Cove caves were connected to the sewer by accident while collecting mold spores for my class. Once I realized that it led right under the bank I put my plan into motion. Fruitmares gave me secret access to the sewer so I decided to frame Balloon Boy for the crime by using his disgusting dessert. I staged my disappearance to throw doubt on any hint of my involvement, Professor Raffalo explained as he frowned. It was foolproof. Genius. That is until you, you, he said unsure of the right words before the sheriff cleared his throat. Meddling, he said as Raffalo nodded. Right. Meddling kids and your blasted dog ruined everything, he said before the sheriff took him away. But wait, what about this locket we found where you were digging? Daphne acts, holding up the golden magnifying glass shaped locket that bore a question mark on it. Never seen it before in my life, the professor said as he was put in the back of the cop car while Naruto swore he saw some recognition on the mayor's face before he let out a sneeze from still being drenched in water. Oh, Mr. Fruitmare, do you think my friend here could borrow a uniform so he can get out of his wet clothes? Velma acts as she put her hands on Naruto's arms to keep him from possibly running from the close proximity to a clown. Of course, 
You did save my store and myself from possibly being incriminated. Take whatever bits of uniform you need since I wouldn't want your friend to get a cold. Mr. Fruitmare said as Velma smiled and led Naruto towards the employee changing room while the sheriff and the mayor scolded the others. You get changed in the bathroom attached, Velma said as she picked up various pieces of the male uniforms, which consisted of light green pants and a darker green button-up shirt. You'll have to wear your wet boxers but at least your sandals aren't ruined, she said as he smiled, shivering a bit from the cold. Thanks Velma, he said before turning his head away from her, sneezing into the sleeve of his shirt. No problem. Now go get changed and put your wet clothes in this plastic bag, she said as she picked up a random empty bag that was sticking out of one of the employee lockers. Velma watched and sat down on one of the chairs as Naruto walked into the bathroom, closing the door behind him. She knew it might be a bit for him to get out of the drenched clothes but she didn't care. She blushed a bit as she noticed a spare women's uniform on the table next to her her mind recalling how Naruto said she would have looked great in it and her curiosity made her wonder how she would look as well and if it would live up to the image in his head. I I guess I have a few minutes to change and try it on. Naruto is getting out of wet and heavy clothes she thought as she stood up and nervously started to change into it, going a bit fast as she would be too embarrassed if Naruto walked back in while she was midway into changing. As she finished changing, Thankful that she was able to do it before Naruto had been able to, she blushed a bit as she looked in front of the mirror. The skirt, just like when Shaggy and Scooby tried it on, was quite short as it nearly showed her panties. It also squeezed her chest a bit, making her already large J-cup chest look even bigger than it already was. Her blush grew as she heard a whistle behind her to see a smiling Naruto looking at her from the door to the bathroom. So I was right. You do look amazing in it, he said with a chuckle for as much as he hated clowns he had to hand it to him for making an amazing uniform. It showed off every bit of Velma made it look even better from showing off her long legs, squeezing as well as showing off a bit of her butt, and made her breasts look even better. He wished he could take a photo but his phone was with his wet clothes in the bag and he doubted Velma would be brave enough to let him take one. Why you really need to get your eyes checked? This dress is more for someone with Daphne's figure, she said as he started to walk towards her. She felt her cheeks heat up a bit more as he looked her over a few more times before he cupped her cheek with a warm smile. That is nonsense Velma, you look absolutely beautiful and stunning in this. I doubt Daphne has the curves that you do, he said as he looked into her soft green eyes. Velma's head slightly short-circuited as this was the most direct thing that Naruto has ever really said to her. She honestly didn't know what to do next so her body did the first thing it thought of. Run. She grabbed her clothes off of the table and ran into the women's restroom with a massive blush on her cheeks before she closed the door and sat down on the tile floor, fanning her face as she would have to think over what he could have actually meant later. Her insecurities winning inside as they made her doubt his words meant what she thought they did. Naruto, back in the employee room frowned, a bit worried that he might have gone too far. Velma, are you okay? If I creeped you out please just forget about it no. He said before Velma interrupted him with a sudden yell. I I mean it didn't creep me out Naruto. I was just surprised by the compliment. Dot did you really mean it? She asked as she wanted to know if he really meant it so her insecurities could stop nibbling at her. Naruto smiled as he turned around, leaning back against the door with a smile as a soft chuckle escaped his lips. I meant every word I said Velma, he said as he heard her giggle slightly from behind the door. Velma couldn't stop the happy smile from growing on her face as she should have known he meant it. Naruto was always the kind to speak what was on his mind at times. Are you still coming over tonight like planned earlier? He asked as she chuckled. Of course, someone has to make sure you don't catch a cold or anything. Just let me get changed out of this first, she said as he nodded with a smile. Sounds good but too bad I didn't get to take a picture. You do look really great in that, he said as she blushed more from behind the door. You need to get your eyes checked, 
she said as he laughed. My eyes are perfectly fine thank you very much. Plus I doubt I could make glasses look as good as you, he said as she had to muffle a groan into her clothes. What is with you and complimenting me today? She asks, a blush still coloring her cheeks. I don't know. Maybe the flying kick I did gave me more adrenaline than I thought but feel like answering things honestly right now, he said with a chuckle as he looked up at the ceiling. Recently I've also come to the decision I'm not going to hide my feelings or what I think anymore. I don't want things to pass me by because I bit my tongue too much or that I didn't go for it and tell someone how I feel, he said as he got up off the ground. I'll be waiting for you in the main shop so I don't embarrass you by talking while you change, he said as Velma heard the door to the employee area open and close. She frowned a bit as she hugged her clothes to her chest, her mind analyzing what he could have meant and just how much was he keeping inside of himself. Could he possibly have been doing the same as her, pushing down her feelings? Her frown turned into a smile as the budding hope that had started growing in her from the night before was growing more and more. Of course she'd have to be 100% sure before doing anything since if she was wrong and she made a fool of herself or ruined their friendship it would be too painful for her. She sighed as she decided to try and figure all this out later, not wanting to leave Naruto waiting for too long as she started to get changed. Thankfully it didn't take too long to get out of before she walked out of the employee room just as she saw Naruto saying goodbye to the others as they left, only the sheriff sticking around, most likely to lock up for Mr. Fruitmare since the clown was nowhere to be seen. Velma couldn't help but get a bit mad as Shaggy hadn't even waited behind to say goodbye to her or even check to see if she was okay after being attacked by Professor Raffalo. He's supposed to be my boyfriend and he doesn't even seem to remember me most of the time, she frowned before she felt Naruto's still slightly damp arm around her with a smile. You ready to leave? The sheriff has to lock up so I think we'd better go so he can go home, he said with a chuckle as Velma couldn't keep her frown and smiled with a nod. Sure, let's get back so you can take a warm shower to keep getting a cold she said as Naruto gave the sheriff a salute while they left the store. Naruto's apartment. Naruto couldn't help but let out a relaxed sigh as they walked into the apartment, thankful it was warmer than the outside. I'm going to get the water running for you so you can take a shower so hurry up and grab your clothes, she said as he chuckled, long since used to her. Mother hen, like tendencies whenever it came to making sure he didn't get sick. I got it. Don't worry, he said as he walked towards his room only to frown as he noticed an envelope sitting on the table that wasn't there when he left. Only two people had keys to his place besides him and they were Velma and her mother and Velma's mom at least respected his privacy to snoop when he was at home, being that he wasn't her kid. The envelope was blank, only a wax seal bearing the number 9 imprinted on it. He frowned as he opened it careful not to break the wax seal too much, and pulled out the letter. Dear Mr. Uzumaki, I do hope this letter hasn't startled you too much. I much rather would have liked to talk to you in person but that cannot be done at this time as it would endanger you too much. I am a member of a clan of people in charge of looking after a certain red rope bound shrine, one I think you are familiar with. The shrine keeps calling out to you and our bindings aren't working nearly as well as they used to. I am sorry that I cannot say much more but know that a change will happen soon in your life, one I hope you can handle. My clan and I will try to help as much as we can. But whatever you do, do not trust the men in suits that will come bearing the same words as I. They want you for what you are. Stay safe. Nine feet. Naruto widened his eyes as he read over the letter a few more times, a cold sweat breaking out on him before he quickly slipped it back into the envelope and into his pocket just as Velma poked her head back out of the bathroom. Come on Naruto, the water is ready. Go take you shower, she said as she walked out and towards his living room. Right, sorry, I was kind of spacing out there it seems, he said with a chuckle as he worked to hide his slight worry. If whoever the hell sent this is talking the truth, which I fear he is since he mentioned something I've only told Velma, then what the hell is he meaning by a change in men in suits? 
he thought with a frown as he decided to look more into it later. Right now he just wanted to relax and spend time with the girl he loved. He'd worry about it all in the morning. Thank 